In a society full of gender stereotypes, women entering the workplace have a hard time establishing themselves as the boss. The workplace is unequal, but gender inequality in the workplace is changing. With millennial women leading the shift, there's hope for further change in the future despite the barriers to women's advancements in the workplace. In regards to family life, women are not traditionally seen as primary breadwinners. Traditional gender roles dictate that this is a job of men and that women should stay at home and raise the children. More and more families are breaking these rules by defying the gender stereotypes set by society. In order to dive deeper into the effect of gender roles in the workplace and within the family today, we have interviewed a married couple, Kent and Carrie Metchen, the vice president of a startup company, Margot Wickersham, and an official with Jen Austin, Natalia Ornelas. I work for a software company and I do some real estate. I uh, am a communications manager at Apple. I'm now vice president of marketing for a startup company. We asked Carrie and Margot how they got into their respective fields. Got out of school and I was I studied sociology. So I had a job at one of the YMCA's in New York and it was more actually I worked in the gym membership office selling memberships but I was also just kind of helping volunteering with the youth group. There was elder hostel. I had a connection at the Y but I took it and was interested because of the kind of sociology aspect of all those different groups. So I started out in sales um, in my career. I have a degree in journalism and I knew I wanted to go into marketing and advertising. So I have a journalism degree with a focus on advertising. It's media now would be the equivalent. Um, and my first job was selling ad space for uh, print. And I did that and I think it's great to have sales experience. We asked them about visible gender roles that were present in their upbringing and how they influenced their perspectives of proper gender roles. Both Kent and Carrie's mothers stayed home. Carrie assumed she would stay home as well, but discovered that the role of homemaker just wasn't for her. Margo explains her childhood experiences with gender roles. Okay, so I was raised in um, a house where my mom didn't work, mm -hmm. um, and so, and a lot of uh, a lot of my friends, that's the way it was. Well, I call it weird because I grew up with a stay-at-home mom, and my sister is stay-at-home. I have a twin brother; his wife is stay-at-home. So I, they had children before me, mm -hmm. and I always just imagined I would stay at home. I was raised in the Deep South, and at a time when it was important for women to marry well because the man was going to be the provider for the family, and that's the way the roles were. And the woman might have a career, either for a while or the whole time, but the man needed to have a career. It was not that I would be the primary breadwinner. Despite preconceived notions of gender roles in their upbringing, both Carrie and Margot are the primary breadwinners in their families today. We asked Carrie and Margot how they dealt with the issues of choosing between staying home with their children or returning to work. And then when I had Lane, I was working at the time, and I was at Apple, and it was a really good job, and I was very torn with going back to work. We were in a situation where we were depending on my income, so I was, I was heartbroken to have to go back to work. It was a huge struggle. Mm -hmm. um, and then... When I got pregnant with Mallory, I ended up quitting and becoming a stay-at-home. And I did that for about a year and a half and realized that that actually was not for me. Mm -hmm. So that was just interesting because I had such a hard time leaving Lane, going back to work. But then once I was able to be home with them, I realized I have got to do something that's not around the kids. It's not around... Something you know, for yourself. Yes. Yep. I had a couple of kids. Um, I turned down the opportunity to be Michael Dell's um, PR manager because I found out I was pregnant with a second child and I knew the commitment would be enormous and that it wasn't the time for me to do that. Um, then it took 10 years off to stay home and raise kids and I pursued art and some other things in my spare time. And, um, and then after a divorce, back to work and I basically started over. Um, because that's what it took and I felt like I had rusty skills and nobody would want me and I didn't think I'd ever be back in the business world so that was actually really tough. We asked Margot how gender roles have influenced physical appearance and expectations in the workplace since she started her career. Um, and so growing up in that era and starting on my, um, my career in the mid-80s there were some women uh, who were in there but in leadership positions but not a ton and the ones who were had to act and look like um, men and you're too young to remember, but it was the same exact suit material with the pinstripes and all that. 
um, same exact like kind of blouse and then the same exact tie material but it was a little bow tie. It was literally a skirt suit version of the of the um, of what men wore to work and that was written before business casual. Um, so I, I think at that time the the beginnings were it was the beginning of how do we do this? How do we integrate women into business? Margot explained how certain industries have been geared more towards employing women. I also think that, that there are some things that haven't changed, and um, such as like the pay the pay gap, the, the pay the pay gap um, for for uh, men and women. Uh, I also think that um, there can be like there should be more opportunity for women to to have like higher up like positions and. Um, thinking about how long it takes, you know, women to get there. And I see that changing in different industries. So certain industries were um, uh, drew women to them right away and became um, even more female than male. For example, would be uh, marketing and communications, um, HR, um, creatives, um, social services, teachers. Lots of different. Um, industries, roles, and departments that played well with, uh, with women's natural tendencies as caretakers. Um, and not that all women are geared towards caretaking more than anything else, but we do bring something to the table that most men don't have. Margot discusses research on why women make less than men in the same fields and touches on the dispersion of jobs in the STEM field between men and women. She talks about how companies with both men and women in the C-suite CEO and upper management positions are more profitable. There was an article about the companies that have both men and women in the C-suite are more profitable than the ones that only have men. And I think that's because there's strength in both genders and now that's beginning to be recognized and why would you want the best of what everybody has to offer? So you have a balance of risk taking and a balance of take the long view um, and uh, that is good for business. Margot expands on how acceptable gender roles in society have changed since she started her career. But when I first started out uh, in my career in the mid-80s, it was not cool for any men to stay at home with kids. I mean, at all. Not cool. That was not a respectable option. Um, I think it still depends on the circle, but it's way more cool. Than it, than it used to be. When I was then, if I fast forward from mid 80s to the 90s where there's lots of women in business, and by then I thought, okay, we're done, everybody's integrated, there's women and men, and it's all fine, we don't have any more issues. But we really did. As you know, both Carrie and Margot are the brand winners for gay families. So they asked Ken, Carrie, and Margot about their thoughts and gender roles today. And nowadays, I would say most of my friends, their wives work, and um, it's, uh, it's a different balance. I mean, I don't think that there's any, um, I don't think people have any issues with that. Um, it seems to be everywhere I've worked, there's always been a pretty even um, group of men and women. In fact, in the last 10 years, all the bosses I've had have all been women. And I just think that um, just in the last 20 years, it's really it's getting closer to even. Um, but I don't think there's any hang-ups like there used to be maybe back in the 60s and 70s. Yeah, I see more at work. I, you know, there's a thousand, probably about 5,000 people here in Austin working at Apple. And most of the women around my age, you know, give or take five, 10 years, have young kids. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of working moms there. I think that there's much more acceptance for your marriage, your family, your family structure can look however it works for you to look. Uh, kind of the modern family thing. That's fine, however you need to do it. You have two men, two women, one of each, role reversal. I think there's a lot more acceptance now for anybody to do anything. To conclude, we ask each interviewer what the, the phrase, like a girl, means to them. The phrase, uh, like a girl, is definitely something that bothers me. Um, I coach soccer, my girls play soccer, and one of my favorite things to do is to keep up with the girls' national team. Mm -hmm. And to say play like a girl, I mean, with these days in basketball and, and soccer and, and just even in um, regular business environments, that means playing tough. Um, you know, I know that in the past you still hear people say that, um, mostly coming from men. And 
I think it's losing its meaning. I don't think we're quite there yet, mm -hmm. but I think um, in a few years it won't. People would be confused by it. So I say I have a twin brother, and so immediately it associates with how I would like throw things or kick or run because there was kind of this very close comparison, and you could see how we, we physically do things differently. But I think society's image of it, I still think of the throwing like a girl, running like a girl. And um, and I personally think that that uh, is going away when you look at how girls are brought up today. I mm -hmm. think it's a much more even playing field. I mean, Wonder Woman, first of all, she's tall like I am. She's beautiful like I'd love to be. She had long legs like I have, and she was just powerful and awesome, but also feminine. So that's... Now it's people like uh, Sheryl Sandberg. Oh, there's just a, a lot more women who are juggling both um, being good parents to their children and having a, a good whole life, not just a good career, not just good parenting.